So you've found a beautiful WordPress theme. It has an amazing style and it looks just perfect for the site that you want to create. But how do you know that it's just as good under the hood as it is on the surface? In this course, you're going to learn how to judge a WordPress theme by more than just its cover. Now, it doesn't matter if you have absolutely no experience in web design. By the end of this course, you're going to know exactly what to look for and what to check before you buy your next WordPress theme. So let's go ahead and get started on WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. I'll see you in the first lesson. Hey, welcome to the first lesson in WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. Before we start actually getting into the practical steps of evaluating theme, we're going to have a talk about the overall way that you should look at evaluating a theme when you're looking for something to go with a specific project. So a specific website that you're setting up for a specific type of application. So we're going to be going through nine different areas that you should check out with each one of your themes that you consider buying or that you should at least be aware of the considerations for each one of these nine areas. Most likely you've already seen what these nine areas are by looking at the list of lessons that are included in this course. But just quickly, I'm gonna go through and list them. We'll be looking into whether sites are responsive and mobile friendly, whether they're cross-browser compatible, whether they have well-crafted typography, whether they're ready for the eventuality that a person is not using JavaScript in their browser, whether they've got full support for WordPress templates and formatting, whether they're using structured data, whether they support the plugins you're going to need, whether they are performant, and whether they are accessible. Now, the first thing that you're probably going to have to be aware of is that the likelihood of finding a theme that is perfect in every one of these categories is extremely low. So far, I have not found a single theme that is perfect across the board, but that's okay. What's most important is that you have a really solid understanding of what your specific project is going to need. And then you can weight each one of these areas, each one of these nine categories. You can weight them depending on how important they are going to be for your project. So then if you know that there's one specific area that you really, really need your theme to be perfect in, you can evaluate the theme for that specific area. And then you can say, OK, well, it's not as strong in this other area, but because it's still going to fit what my project needs, this is overall the best theme for what I'm trying to achieve. So as we go through each one of the subsequent lessons in this course, we're going to talk not only about the practicalities of how to find out if a theme is strong in a particular area, but also how to think about how important that strength or weakness is for what you are trying to achieve with your website project. So don't worry when you do start looking at themes and you find, oh, it's weak in this area and it's weak in that area, don't throw your hands up in frustration because you can't find the perfect theme. What it's really about is finding the right theme for what you want to do. So in the next lesson, we're going to start going through these topics, going through these categories of theme evaluation, and we're going to start with how you can look into whether a theme is responsive and mobile friendly. So we'll check out how you can make sure that your theme works well in different size browsers, on different size screens with different pixel densities, and with different methods of interaction. So we're going to get into all of that in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In this lesson, we're going to check out how you can make sure that a theme you buy is responsive and mobile friendly. So what that means is it has to look good and function well, no matter what kind of device or what size screen a person is looking at your site on. Your site has to accommodate a massive range of different sizes of screens and different types of devices. So on the one end of the spectrum, you might have a tiny little mobile phone with an itty bitty screen that only allows for about 320 pixels of width. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you might have somebody on a 27 inch monitor and they've got 2000 pixels of width or higher to deal with. Now, if you have a theme that's only looking good on a little screen, then anyone who's looking on that big monitor is not gonna be able to enjoy your site properly and vice versa. If you have a theme that only looks good on a giant screen, then all of your mobile phone users are going to suffer. What you need is a theme that's able to adapt seamlessly to any type of device that gets thrown at it. So that being a web designer yourself, how are you supposed to figure out if a theme is properly responsive or not? Well, don't worry, because you don't need any special expertise. All you need is a couple of tricks of the trade that we use to test our own sites. And I'm going to show you how to use these evaluation methods so that you can check on a theme Make sure it's responsive before you purchase it. We talked about evaluating each one of the topics that we're going to be covering in this course for how important it is 
for your specific site. Well, with this category, this is pretty relevant to everybody. You can take it as a given fact that people are going to be looking at your site on all different kinds of devices. So no matter what kind of project you've got, this is something that you definitely need to check on. And that's why we're going through it first. And the way that I'm going to show you the things that you should look for in a responsive theme is just by showing you some good examples of themes that do it right. Now let's have a look at a couple of specific things that you want to check on. Now one of the gotchas that you can have happening in themes that don't adapt very well to a large monitor size is in a theme like this, for example, where we've got these really big wide images that are the full width of the screen. Sometimes you might find that a theme developer has not considered the largest possible size that a layout could be and you might find that down the right side here, for example, this image gets clipped off. So instead of having the image stretch the full width, it hits a sort of a maximum size and then it doesn't handle it very well. Or you might get a really clear seam down the side where the image repeats itself. But this theme is a really good example of a theme that does the right thing with its site width images. So with this one, we can see that uh, if I resize the browser window, it doesn't matter what width I have this browser window, the images up in this slider stay at the correct size. So that's one of the first things that you can check on. Another thing that you want to look at is the width of any text content here. So there's a certain number of words per line that are comfortable for the human eye to read. If you have only a few words per line, then your eye gets tired from having to continually go down to the next line and the next line and the next line. And if you have too many words per line, then your eye gets tired from having to go too far to the left and right in order to take in that whole line. So when you're checking to make sure that a theme looks good at a really wide size like this, you wanna make sure that the theme developer has contained any text to a nice readable width. And this theme is a really good example. So this text here is just right. If this column that the text is in was as wide as this site, so say if it went from here to here, that would be uncomfortable to read. And it would definitely be uncomfortable to read if it went all the way from this edge over to this edge. So you want to have a look at a theme at the widest size that you can get it and make sure that you feel like it's comfortable to read the text. And another thing that you want to check on is making sure that the columns that might form the layout collapse properly. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll go back to this theme. And this is actually a really good example of collapsing columns. So you can see here that we've got three different columns, but on a thin device, like a mobile phone, you're not going to be able to split that little amount of space into three columns and still be able to comfortably absorb that content. So a well-designed theme is going to reduce the number of columns that are in the layout as the amount of available space reduces. So let's see how that works in action. We've got three columns in this theme at its widest size. And then as we reduce it down, you can see that the columns are already shrinking in width. And there we go. So now they've reached a point where having three columns would be too much of a squeeze. It's collapsed down to two columns so that it's much more readable. And if we keep going, we can see it squishing down even more. And there we go. Now we've got it collapsed down to a single column. And you want to make sure that everything that you have does this for you. Everything needs to collapse down to a single column at its narrowest width. So those considerations alone will take you a long way towards making sure that your site is fully responsive. Make sure that it works at the widest possible layout and at the narrowest possible layout. And then on top of just making sure that the layout is adaptable to different widths, you also need to make sure that the theme is going to work well on different types of devices. So the first and the easiest thing to do is just to get the URL of a demo of the theme that you're interested in buying and just plug it into every device that you have, every phone, every tablet, every laptop, every desktop, just check it on all the devices that you can get your hands on. But obviously there's only so many devices every individual has and you can't test for everything. So what you need is a way to emulate the devices that you don't personally own. And you can actually do that totally free by using the Chrome browser. And there are other browsers that give you this device emulation functionality too, but we'll just focus on Chrome for now. All you need to do is open up the demo in Chrome and then press Control Shift I, and that is gonna bring up Chrome's inbuilt developer tools. And then if you look down 
in the bottom left here, there's a little button that says Toggle Device Toolbar. And if you click that, you can see we have this toolbar across the top that's opened up. And this is where we can simulate different types of devices. So for example, if I click this little drop down list here and I want to emulate an iPhone 7, it's automatically changed this preview to be the same dimensions that an iPhone 7 display has. And you can see that we've got this little circle instead of a cursor. So that simulates touch functionality for us. So now we can use it to drag the screen up and down. We can make sure that the menu remains accessible, remains usable when you're working with touch. We can double check and make sure that our initial tests of the layout are still solid in this format, that everything's still looking right. And we can also flip this orientation so that we get to see a couple more different layouts to check on. So you can have a look through this list here and you can try emulating a whole bunch of different devices. And you can also jump in here and create your own additions here. So if there's a device that's not showing up in that drop down list and you want to add it, then you can go ahead and do so by just checking the box for the device that you want to add. Or you also have the option to add your own custom device here. So for the purposes of evaluating a theme and making sure it's responsive and mobile friendly, that's really going to be enough to confirm that the theme is getting across the line and it is going to work for your site visitors using all different types of devices. So just to recap, get onto the largest monitor you can get access to and just resize the browser window with your theme demo inside it and make sure everything looks right. Spin it up on as many different devices as you can access and just test it that way. And then for all the devices that you don't have access to, use this emulation tool that's bundled in with the Chrome web browser free of charge. All right, so now that you know how to check if a theme is responsive and mobile friendly, the next step is to make sure that it's going to work on all the different browsers that your site visitors might be using. So every different browser can have slight differences in the way that it's going to render a web page. So something that works perfectly in one browser might not be perfect in another browser. So in the next lesson, we're going to go through how you can check and make sure that a theme you're interested in is properly cross-browser compatible. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In the last lesson, we looked at how you can check to make sure that a theme you're interested in buying is responsive and mobile friendly. Now we're gonna look at how you can make sure that it's cross browser friendly. Every browser renders websites a little bit differently. You might find that from one browser to the next, the layout is slightly different. The spacing changes a little bit. Some things that might work in one browser might not work in another. So it's important to make sure that you're not inadvertently gonna be using a theme that's gonna deliver a broken experience to your site visitors. And what can be the tricky part is trying to find out which browsers your site visitors are actually using. To get a broad idea of which browsers you need to accommodate and you need to make sure your site works in or your theme works in, you can look at some of the global browser share statistics that are available. So for example, on the screen here, you can see we're at statcounter.com and that's giving us a percentage breakdown of the browsers that this website has been able to track. So nobody knows exactly what browsers are being used around the world. You only know what you can directly interact with. So for this stat tracking service, these are the figures that they've been able to establish. And we can see here, we've got six browsers that we're looking at. We've got Chrome with a little over half the users, Safari at 14%, UC Browser at 8%, Firefox at 5%, Opera at about 4%, and IE at 3.2%. But here's the thing, your website is your website, and your site visitors are your site visitors. So the only way to really know what browsers they are actually using is if you can get some stats of your own traffic, because what your site visitors are using might be totally different to the kind of stats that you're seeing here. I'm gonna show you an example. This is from one of my own personal websites. Now here you can see along the top column here, the group percentage for each of these browsers. So here I've got 9.4% of my visitors to this website are using IE. And that compares to 3.2% here. So right there, we immediately see a difference. And we can see an even more substantial difference if we look at the usage stats for Firefox. 
Here, I've got almost 20% of my users are on Firefox, whereas here, only 5.6% of these global stats are using Firefox. Now, if you depended solely on this Chrome statistic here, you would assume that for every website, a little over half the users are gonna be on Chrome. But here on this site, only 34% of my users are on Chrome. So we've got a whole bunch of other stats for Opera and Safari. And then, so if we go all the way down to the bottom here, you can see that there are some browsers that aren't even listed on this global stats breakdown. I have very few visitors here, but you may find that with your site and your specific audience, there might be some of the browser that a significant portion of your visitors are using. And therefore you'll need to make sure that the theme that you buy works with that browser. So overall, the point is use these stats as a baseline guide, but if you can, if you can get access to statistics for your website, try to find out for a fact what your visitors are actually using so you can cater to them. All right, so once you know which browsers you need to accommodate, how do you check a theme to make sure that it runs on those browsers? The obvious thing to do is just to install as many browsers on as many different operating systems and devices as you can and check them all. But that is not gonna get you across every browser. For example, you can't install Safari unless you have an Apple device and you can't install Edge or IE unless you're running a Windows system. So this is where you can use third-party services that emulate different browsers running on different operating systems. And there are a few of these services that you can use, but the thing is, most of them are oriented towards professional web developers, which kind of means that they tend to be priced accordingly. But if all you wanna do is just test a theme here and there and make sure it's not gonna be broken for a significant portion of your users, then you might wanna check out a service like TestingBot. I'm showing you this one because it's relatively affordable. So where another service might be, say, $29 a month or thereabouts, this service is $20 for a year. You can also use a trial version, which will have some limitations to which browsers you can test on, but it will at least let you test for these main browsers like IE and Edge if you don't necessarily run a Windows machine. So I'm gonna show you how that works and we're going to test this theme Avada, which is a pretty well-known theme on ThemeForest. And what I've done is I've signed up for a free trial for testing bot. And then in the sidebar here, I've gone to screenshots. And there's a couple of ways you can test with this service. You can either go to live testing and it will spin up an actual simulated version of that browser and the operating system for you. And you can get in and you can interact with the website in this emulated version of the browser, or for a quick and easy option, you can just have screenshots generated that show you what this theme is gonna look like in these different browsers. So I've plugged in the address of the demo for this theme, and I'm just gonna hit generate screenshots. That process actually can take a while, so I'm just gonna show you a couple of screenshots that I generated earlier. All right, so here we go. You can have a look here and see, this is an example of a screenshot that's being generated, showing you how this site would look on Chrome 44 on the Windows Vista operating system. So we can open it up and check it out. And then we can see that everything looks fine. Everything seems to be working as it should be. We've also got another example of Firefox 39 on Windows 8. Once again, everything seems to be working just fine and you can look more closely at these screenshots, of course, to make sure that everything's in order. And when you go through the process of generating screenshots, if you do have a full account, then you'll be able to select exactly which browsers you need to test for and on which operating systems. And as I mentioned, you also have that live testing option too. So let's just recap everything that you need to think about with browser compatibility. First up, you can have a look at the estimated global breakdown of browser usage and make sure that you have those main browsers covered. If you can, check out the statistics of your own website to see for sure what your visitors are using. Install and test on as many of those browser and operating system combinations as you can yourself. And for everything else, try to use a third-party emulation service like TestingBot. There's one more thing that can help you with the process of evaluating if a theme is gonna work with a particular browser, and that is if you're looking on ThemeForest for a theme, then if you jump into the details page for a particular theme and you look down here in the sidebar, you can see that we have a section marking compatible browsers. So 
These are the browsers that the developer has already tested on, so you can be confident to know that those browsers at minimum are covered with the particular theme that you're looking at. So that wraps up everything that you need to know about browser compatibility when you're evaluating a theme. In the next lesson, we're gonna start looking at something that's a part of the design of a theme, and that is the typography. Typography is really, really important in a theme, and it's not just because a theme needs to look pretty. Unless you have a site that's 100% video based or 100% image based, you need your text to be really easily absorbable by your visitors to make sure that you can get your message across. So in the next lesson, we're gonna look at some of the aspects of typography that you should consider when you're evaluating a theme that you might like to buy. So we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, and welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In this lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at how to identify a well-crafted typography. So like I said at the end of the last lesson, unless you've got a site that's gonna be completely based around videos and images, then it's really important that you have good typography. And what do I mean by good typography? I just mean text that is designed in such a way that it's conscious of making sure that the reading experience is easy and pleasurable. Some of this is gonna come down to personal taste. So some people will like certain fonts, other people will like other fonts, but there are a few key things that you can definitely check out in each and every theme that you look at. One of those things is the default text size. And this sort of connects back to what we were talking about before with making sure that a theme looks good on different devices. So you need to make sure that the text size is readable and comfortable to read on both big screens and on little screens. It's not uncommon to find that a theme has a text size that's too small. So on a mobile screen, you end up having to pinch to zoom it out to make it comfortable to read. And on a large monitor, sometimes the text doesn't take advantage of the space that's available and you end up with text that's too small to read even though you have a lot of space to work with. So definitely look at that first, read some demo content on the theme and make sure that it's comfortable to your eye. That's the best place to start and have a look at that same test on multiple different devices. And what you see on screen here is an example theme that I've picked out because it has excellent typography. The text here, the default text is just the right size. It's not too small, it's not too large, it's very easy to read, and that's the case on any type of device. And another perk of this theme that I'm showing you here is they've gone to the trouble to assemble a style guide or a typography presentation so you can have a look at all of the different aspects of this theme's typography all in one place. And that's something that you should definitely try to find on a theme demo. It's gonna make your life a lot easier if there is a presentation of the different aspects of the typography. If not, just browse through the theme and try to see as many aspects of the typography presentation as you can. All right, so the next thing after you've checked the default text size for just regular text is the headings. There are six different heading levels. And here you can see we've got an example of an H1 level heading and then an H2. And generally speaking, each heading is gonna get smaller as you go through the different levels. So the things to look for here are to make sure that it's clearly distinguishable that these are headings that you like the graduation in size and style of the headings, and also that you have a good amount of space above and below the headings. In particular, the amount of space that's between the heading and the next text. One common problem that can come up is you might see a heading that looks great by itself, but then when you try to put a paragraph of text afterwards, it can be cramped up here with no space in between the heading and the text. So just check on that and make sure that the spacing in between these headings works. Another thing to check on if you can, if you get the chance, is that headings look good when they're put right above one another. So for example, you might want to have an article that uses a headline with an H1 heading and then a subheadline with an H2 heading. Or it might be an H2 heading with an H3 subtitle. In some cases, a theme might be designed so that if you stack one heading on top of another, there's way too much space in between. You won't always get to test if that's the case with a theme demo, but if you do get the chance, that's something that's really helpful to find out. The next thing that you want to look at is line heights. So you can see that we have a certain amount of white space in between each line in this paragraph here. And that doesn't just happen automatically. It's up to the web designer to decide how much space there should be in between these lines. And you want to check to make sure that these lines aren't too cramped up, that you don't have lines of text sitting too closely together, which makes them difficult to read. And again, that's just a matter of taking a look. There's no 
magic number of what the correct line height is, just take a look and make sure it's easily readable to your eye. And then after that, you also have some extras, things like, if we scroll down here, block quotes. So have a look and try to find out if there's a demo of what a block quote is gonna look like if you use it with your theme. Also, ideally, you wanna have a look at lists and see how those are gonna appear. Sometimes if you don't see a demonstration of how a list is gonna look in a theme, when you actually go to use a list, you might find that you have something like the bullet points are hanging off to the left side instead of being indented the way you might like them to be, for example. So definitely try to get a look at as many different examples of different aspects of typography in a theme as you possibly can. So this is one great example of typography. Everything's very neatly done. Everything's very readable. The sizing is good. The styling is good. And when I say good, I'm not meaning by a particular taste. I'm just meaning that you can comfortably read all of this information without feeling that your eyes are being strained. Let's have a quick look at another couple of examples. So here we've got another theme that's showing off its typography. This is really convenient when a theme puts all of these in one place for you. So again, we have a comfortable size for the default text with a comfortable line height. We have a very clear graduation of one heading level to another. And you might actually argue that the fifth level heading and sixth level heading are a little bit too similar to one another. That's something that will come down to your personal taste and how much you see yourself using that sixth level. And then if we scroll down further, we can see how the block quote is going to look when it's used. We've got some code formatting and some examples of lists. So these are the types of things that you wanna look for in a typography page. And then we have one more example. This is a really good demo because it shows you multiple pages of different demonstrations of typography. So right here, we've got the typography basics. It's showing us how bolding and underlining looks, how links look, and how light text looks on a dark background. And then if we head up to elements and we take a look at headings, then we've got a whole page just to show us how the different levels of headings look. And then we've got the same thing up here for lists. So I've got all kinds of different list demos here and this is exactly what you wanna to try to find. So if you can't find all of those things in one page, then just have a browse around the demo of the theme and try to find as many of these things as you can. As I said, the main thing isn't that it adheres to any one particular type of design style. What really matters is how comfortable everything is to the eye. So those are the points that you need to consider in terms of well-crafted typography in a theme. In the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at how to make sure that your theme can cope without JavaScript being enabled in a browser. Sometimes people will deliberately disable JavaScript in their browser for security reasons. They may have restrictions at work that don't allow them to run JavaScript. There can be all kinds of reasons that JavaScript may not work in a browser. And unfortunately, some themes, if JavaScript doesn't work, they'll just fall over and fail to function properly. So in the next lesson, we're gonna go through what you can do to check that's not the case. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about how to make sure a theme that you're interested in can cope if there's no JavaScript active in a visitor's browser. If you've never heard of JavaScript before, basically it's a scripting language that gets executed by the browser that can be used to add extra functionality to a theme. So for example, it might be used to power a slideshow or it might be used to load fonts or create animated effects. There's all different kinds of things that you can do with JavaScript and most themes will use JavaScript in some way, shape or form, but there's always gonna be a percentage of your users who don't allow JavaScript to execute in their browser for one reason or another. They may be blocking JavaScript out of security concerns. They might be blocking JavaScript because they're tired of JavaScript powered advertisements. Their workplace might not allow them to run JavaScript or some JavaScript might just fail to load or function for some type of unknown reason. So it's always a good idea to make sure that your theme either can still function without JavaScript or if it really, really depends on JavaScript that it at least displays some type of message to a user, letting them know that JavaScript is required in order to view a theme. I'm gonna give you a little example of how much difference it can make when JavaScript is or isn't active on a particular site. Now this here is not WordPress, so it's a little bit beside the point, but it's a good example for our purposes. This is Discourse, which is a type of forum that's run and it's primarily powered by JavaScript. 
So you can see that we've got all the different conversation topics that are going on in this forum. Now, if I disable JavaScript, have a look at how different it looks. So now that looks totally different. The layout's totally changed and it looks like a completely different website. Now what's important to note though, is that you can still see all of the content. So this is actually a good way to handle JavaScript not being active in a theme that uses a lot of JavaScript. The main thing is you wanna make sure that the content is still accessible for people who are visiting your site. So how can you check if a theme that you're interested in buying copes well without JavaScript? Well, the way to do it is to get yourself an extension that lets you toggle JavaScript on and off in your browser. And this is one that you can use in the Chrome web browser, Quick JavaScript Switcher. And I'll include a link to this extension in the notes below this video so you can install it and try it out yourself. It's free of charge. And what this will do is add a little toggle up here in your toolbar. All you need to do is hit this toggle and that will turn off JavaScript in the browser. Hit it again, it'll turn JavaScript back on. So let's have a look at a couple of themes and we'll see how well they cope without JavaScript. So this theme actually uses a fair amount of JavaScript, but let's find out what happens when we turn that JavaScript off. All right, so now that's refreshed. That has made this little demo sidebar pop out because that's powered by JavaScript. However, that's not gonna be present in the live theme when you're actually using it. So we can just ignore this. One of the things that we wanna check on is making sure that the menu system is still accessible. Sometimes developers will create JavaScript powered dropdowns, but those dropdowns can't be accessed when JavaScript is off. But if we hover over the menu items here, we can see that we do have this dropdown appearing even though JavaScript is off. So that's all good, that's perfectly fine. Another thing that can happen sometimes is if you have a slider in this area here, when JavaScript gets turned off, you might see all of the slides stacked one on top of the other, but that's also not happened here. That's behaving just fine. And we can just scroll through and have a look. And we can see here that everything looks just fine. So nothing is broken there and nothing looks drastically different. All of the content is still accessible and that's exactly what we want. All right, now let's have a look at another example. Now this is a particularly interesting example because you can see in this URL here, we see layout is powered by masonry. Now masonry is something that's written in JavaScript that helps to arrange all of the columns on a page. So you can see how we've got all of these sort of tiles in these columns and each one of them is arranged as the name suggests, like masonry tiles. So this layout is really heavily powered by JavaScript. So then the question is, what happens when we turn JavaScript off? Does the content remain accessible even though JavaScript is being used so heavily? Well, let's take a look. All right, so now we'll scroll down and we're doing just fine. So we've still got all our content here. The only thing that we're missing is it's not able to piece these tiles together masonry style, but all of the content is still accessible and that's what really counts. It doesn't matter too much if there is some imperfections, unless that's something that really is a bother to you and you, you don't wanna have as part of your site, but all of the content is accessible. So that is requirement number one. And you can also see that even though we have a slider up here when JavaScript is active, it hasn't broken anything that JavaScript is not active. The only thing that's maybe a little wacky is this loading bar is still going, even though there's no slideshow actually running. And something to bear in mind is typically people who do deliberately disable JavaScript in their browser, they're used to things being not necessarily 100% right. So they're not gonna be expecting slideshows to be running like they would if they were running JavaScript. So you don't have to worry about being too, too fussy as long as everything still remains accessible, that navigation remains accessible and that nothing is completely out the window. Another thing that you wanna do as part of these types of tests is use that mobile emulation mode that we used earlier. Sometimes people will use JavaScript to handle transitioning their site from one layout to another and doing things like triggering a mobile version of a menu, for example. So I'm gonna open up the web developer tools with Control shift i And I'm actually just gonna get this out of the way so you can see a bit more clearly. 
and we'll make this emulate an iPad Pro. So now we can see that it's still totally accessible to get into the menus. I'm gonna take that back. And everything is still looking just fine. So these are the things to look for. You want to check out how everything behaves without JavaScript in both normal desktop mode and in mobile emulation mode as well. The best possible result is that it looks and behaves exactly the same as it does without JavaScript. If you can't have that, then the next best thing is to make sure that the content is still accessible, including navigation. And then in the event that those two things fail, then the third best thing is to at least have a message letting users know that things don't function because the site requires JavaScript. And this is one of those things where how important this is for your project is really up to you. A lot of people feel that the percentage of users that don't have JavaScript active is small enough that they're not willing to put a lot of time into making sure that the Node.js functionality is top tier. A lot of it will come down to who you think your audience is. So if you think you've got a lot of people in your audience who are likely to be blocking JavaScript because, for example, they are security conscious or they're more inclined to be trying to shut down any JavaScript powered ads, then this is definitely something that you would want to put a bit more thought into. If you don't think that you're going to have a huge number of people looking at your site without JavaScript, then just make sure that it just gets across the line, that it just has basic functionality in the event of JavaScript failure. All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at some WordPress specific things that you should check on in a theme that you're considering buying. WordPress has its own set of requirements. It has its own organization and a good WordPress theme developer will be closely acquainted with all of these different aspects of WordPress and they will have built out a theme to accommodate these different aspects. So we're going to go through a little list of some WordPress specific things that you should check and make sure are present in your theme. So we're going to do that in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In this lesson, we're going to have a look at some of the WordPress specific things that you should check into, just a bit of a list to tick off and go through and assess in each of the themes that you're considering buying. So every WordPress theme is made up of a bunch of templates and different templates control the way different parts of your site look. A good theme developer is aware of all of these different templates and they put time and effort into designing and coding each one of these templates to make sure every part of your site looks and functions properly. So as part of your assessment process, it's a good idea to go through and check on each one of these major templates yourself and make sure that it looks the way that you want it to look and it functions the way you want it to function. Now, the first thing that we're gonna check on is making sure that comments are nicely handled on blog posts. Now here we are on the homepage of a site that handles comments quite well. So I'm just gonna show you some good examples of each one of the templates and WordPress specific formatting aspects that we're gonna go through. Now this one here, you can see that above the title here, it's showing you how many comments there are. And not all themes will show you how many comments are available to read on that particular blog post. It may be something you want, it may be something you don't want. But if you think it is something that you would like, then be sure to check out each of the blog posts from the main pages or archive pages and see that that link is there. So now let's go ahead and look at how these comments are formatted. So this is the blog post that is linked to from that front page. And this is the area at the end of the blog post showing the comments. There are a couple of things that you wanna look at here. One of the things is making sure that you can identify that a comment is a reply to a previous comment by virtue of it being nested. So this one's doing that quite well. So you can see that this comment here is a reply to this comment here. It's also a good idea to check and make sure that you can see the icons of the user and the name of the user. And if you want this to appear, also the date of the comment as well. And you wanna see that you've got this reply link also visible so that if somebody wants to talk to another commenter on the site, they can. And then if we scroll down a little further, we also wanna check that there is a clear and accessible comment form to make sure that that comment participation is accessible to people if you want it to be. But the next thing that we're gonna look at is image alignment. Now WordPress actually has a specific way of allowing images to be left aligned and right aligned. And a theme developer has to add code to their theme specifically to make WordPress images align left and align right. So it's a good idea to try and find somewhere on the site 
a demonstration showing you that this left and right alignment is working properly. So in this example, we can see that they're showing off the left aligned image here, also showing their caption functionality. And then if we scroll down, we also see the right aligned image. So just have a look through the theme and make sure that you can find that that alignment functionality is working properly. Next up, we're gonna have a look at blogs. As sometimes you'll get a theme like this one where on the home page, you don't have a blog, you have some different type of presentation. Now, if you see something like this and you like the home page, but you know you are gonna want to use a blog on that site, then make sure that you take the time to search in the menu and find if there is support for blog styling in the theme. So in this case, we've got a blog up in the menu here, and that takes us through to this layout, and this shows us how the blog posts are laid out. So just have a look through and make sure that you like the way that, that blog is set out, even if you're not seeing a blog layout on the homepage of the site. So you wanna check on that blog layout, but you also wanna click through to one of the posts and make sure that you like the single post layout. So if we go back up here, this post here, if we click on it to read the full article, takes us through to this display. So make sure that you like the way the featured image is showing, make sure you like the headings and the way the tags are displayed and the way that the text is displayed, the author section, everything else that surrounds that post, make sure that you like that single post presentation style. So that is a single post, you also, in a typical WordPress theme, wanna have a look at the single page styling. So while a single post template is gonna control how one post from your blog looks, a single page template is for things like an About Us page, for example. So let's take a look at an example of a single page. So you can see in the menu here that we're looking at a demo of the single page, and we can scroll through and just check it out. And again, all we're doing is making sure that we like the way that it looks and the way that it's formatted. And then finally, the last thing that you definitely wanna check on each and every theme that you consider buying is the way that archives are presented. So archives are typically tags and categories. So you might see that a post has been tagged with a particular tag, you click on that tag link and it'll show you all the other posts that have the same tag. The same thing goes with categories. A post might show itself as being in a particular category and you wanna check and see how all of the posts for that particular category will look on an archive page. So here we've got an archive demonstration here. This is showing us the category archives. So in this example, this is the humans category, and this page is showing us all of the posts that are in the humans category. Once again, we're just checking to make sure that it's there, make sure it's functional, make sure you like the presentation, Make sure it clearly shows what category a person is browsing. And then it's the same thing for any other archives like tag archives. Again, making sure that everything's clearly displayed and that you like the style. You might also wanna look at author archives. So if you're gonna have a multi-author site, allow somebody to look at all of the posts written by a particular author. So the main two default ones are that tag and category display but have a think about if there are gonna be other type of archive displays that you wanna use as well, and just make sure that they look and present the way that you want. So those are the main things to look at to ensure you've got full WordPress compatibility. Check out the comments section, left and right image alignment, a blog, if it's not obvious on the homepage what the blog looks like, a single blog post, a single page, and any archives like tags and categories. All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at structured data. So basically it's up to a good theme to take the content that's on your site and put structure around it in such a way that it's going to be extra palatable to search engines like Google. If you have good structured data, then it can allow for things like rich search results to appear in Google. For example, if you have a site with reviews on it, then correct structured data can allow review scores on your site to actually show up in Google search results. So we're gonna take a look at some of the rich search results that you can get with structured data. And we're gonna go through how you can evaluate if the theme that you're looking at uses structured data well. And we'll take a look at some examples that show how good structured data should be done. So we'll step through all of that in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at structured data. So what is structured data? Well, basically it's a kind of code that developers can optionally include in their themes and it helps search engines like Google to 
understand the content of a website. And that in turn allows that search engine to better index the content and also potentially to show off a kind of rich snippet inside the search results themselves. And there's a couple of different ways that this coding can be done. You don't really need to worry too much about that technical side of things, but just to give you a quick look. So you have this type of code here that highlights the most essential portions of the site's content. Now to give you an idea of the kind of thing that you might get as a result of having a theme that uses structured data, you can have a look at this gallery of rich search results on Google site. I'll give you a link so you can have a look at this yourself. But you'll notice here that we have things like a breadcrumb trail appearing in search results, contact details appearing in search results, a carousel, logo showing up for company websites. There's all kinds of different things that Google can show inside each search results if the data is presented to it in the right way. Now, obviously nobody wants to go trawling through the code of a theme that they're considering buying. So how do you figure out if a theme is using good structured data or not? Well, handily, Google provides a structured data testing tool. So all you'll need to do is get a URL for a demo of the theme that you're considering buying and just plug it in here and you can see the way that Google is evaluating the data that's on the site. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of themes that are using structured data and see what Google is able to extract from those theme demos. So first up, we've got this news theme. So I'm just gonna grab the URL and paste it in here and hit run test. All right, so you can see down on the right side here, we've got a whole bunch of information that has been extracted via this structured data. And each one of these is a category of information that has been found in this site. So for example here, you can see it says 73 items. So that means that it's been able to identify that there are 73 blog postings here. Here against website, it's identified one item, which is perfect because it's only one website. If we expand this, then you can see that we've got a bunch of information that's specific to this website. So it gives that concentrated essential information. But if we go back and expand this instead, now you can see that there are a whole bunch of individual blog postings nested inside this category. And here, again, we've got the real essential information for each item. So you can see the headline, we can see the date of the publishing. It's showing the address of an image to represent the article. And this is all things that can go into creating those rich search snippets that we looked at just before. So this is a really good example. If you can plug the URL for a theme demo into this and you can get a whole bunch of boiled down information like that, that's exactly what you're looking for. Let's have a look at another example. So this theme is called Optimize. And we'll plug this in, new test. All right, so now this one, this is good too, but not as good as the last one. So you can see here that everything is kind of mushed in together under this web page item. So we just have this one single item. And this is still good because we still have a whole bunch of information that Google has been able to access. If you can see it here, then Google can see it. But it's not as well organized as that last site that we looked at where everything was neatly nested into individual items that Google was able to see. And let's take a quick look at one more example. And this is another really good example. So once again, we've got these discrete entities, these discrete items that have been identified. We've got a single item for the web page, and in here, we just have information that is related to this website itself. You can see here that we've also got information on the organization that's running this theme. That's the kind of thing that allows, like we saw in the gallery page, say a logo to appear in the search results for a website. And then you can see it's identified two blog posts, it's identified services. So there's a whole bunch of different stuff that a theme can make really clear to Google if it's using structured data really well. Now, sometimes you might find a demo when you plug it in here, shows absolutely no results on the right column here. As I mentioned, using structured data is a type of coding that is optionally added to a website. 
So a theme developer may elect not to use it at all. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad theme if you find that there's nothing showing up on the right here. You know, like we talked about earlier, no theme is perfect. So if you do find a theme that's great in every other way, but it has no structured data, then you're going to have to weigh up how important the possibility of having search results like this is to your project versus having strengths in the other areas that the theme performs really well. But that's it as far as how you can check on that. It's as simple as coming to this data testing tool and just running the demo through and seeing what Google's able to extract. So in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at some considerations that you need to make in terms of plugin compatibility. In a lot of cases, it's just fine to sort of figure out what plugins you're going to need after your site is already set up. But there are some plugins where you really need to have a theme that's designed with that plugin in mind. Some plugins require themes to be coded in a way specific to them. And with some plugins, you'll just get the best experience from that plugin if you have a theme that's designed to work with it, even if it's not absolutely essential. And we're gonna run over some key areas, key types of plugins that you really should consider upfront. So we're gonna take a look at some different sort of categories of plugins so you can have a think about whether those types of plugins are gonna be something you'll need. And we'll look at some example themes that work well with those plugins. So you can evaluate if those types of theme features are something that you need as part of your project. So we're gonna check all of that out in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. In this lesson, we're gonna talk a bit about plugins and the things that you might need to consider when you're choosing a theme that is either required for compatibility with certain plugins or is just gonna give you the best results with certain plugins. We've got four broad categories of plugins that I think that you should consider whether you're going to need them as part of your site or not. And then we're gonna check out some examples of themes that are made with these types of plugins in mind. You can see what type of inclusions you get in a theme that's designed to work with particular kinds of plugins. And then that way you can decide how important these things are for your project. And before we get into looking at those demos, I just want to show you something on ThemeForest that can help you with this process. If you jump into ThemeForest and then you click on WordPress up here, if you scroll down on the left side, you can see that there is a little bunch of checkboxes here. And this is a list of specific plugins that you can use with WordPress. And if you tick one of the boxes here, so let's say we want something that's gonna work with BB Press, then it's gonna filter out all of these results so that you only get themes that are designed specifically with compatibility for that plugin in mind. So once you know what kind of plugins you're going to need and how important theme compatibility is for you, then that can be a helpful part of the theme selection process. All right, now let's check out some examples of the types of themes that we're talking about. So the first of these categories that is a good idea to consider up front is e-commerce. Are you going to be selling anything on your site? And if so, then what kind of complexity are you going to need in the management of selling those products? So for example, if all you need to do is maybe sell one ebook, then you're not going to have to worry too much because it's not going to be too difficult to set up, say, a single link to buy a single product later on down the track. But if you're going to have a few products and you're going to need to organize them, especially if you're going to have physical products where you need to manage postage calculations and tax inclusions and all those types of things, then you should definitely consider e-commerce at the start of the project to make sure that the site that you end up with is capable of handling all of these different factors. Now, there are a bunch of different e-commerce plugins. You've got WooCommerce, Easy Digital Downloads, WP e-commerce, Jigo Shop. There's a whole bunch of different plugins. So the first thing you would want to do is take a look at those plugins and see which one matches the kind of products you're going to be selling the best because in some cases they do have fairly distinct types of functionality included. We're gonna have a quick look at some themes for two of the most popular plugins. We're gonna check out one for WooCommerce, which is a good sort of catch all e-commerce plugin. If you're gonna be doing physical products in particular, then you might want to look at something like this so that you can have add-ons to help you work with postage and things like that. We're also gonna be looking at a theme for easy digital downloads, which is more focused on digital products. It does have the capacity to work with physical products, but if you're gonna be selling things like eBooks instead of physical products, then you might like to look in that direction instead. So first up, we have this theme here, and this is designed specifically to work with easy digital downloads. So as we scroll down, 
you can see that we've got product displays. And this is all coded so that it knows how to dig into the information that's been posted via the Easy Digital Downloads plugin. It knows how to look up the name of a product, the price of a product, and all of the different product-specific information pertinent to each one of those items. So as you scroll through, you can see this is a theme that's optimized for this type of e-commerce. So if you just get an everyday theme, you're probably still going to be able to work with it, but it's going to be a lot harder and your presentation isn't going to be quite at the level that it will be if you choose a theme like this. And here is an example of a theme that's designed to support WooCommerce. And I believe this theme also supports some other e-commerce plugins as well. And right from the start, you can see that this is all oriented towards behaving like an e-commerce site. We've got products showing on the front page. We can see the product image. We can see the pricing. We can see the name of the product. We've got some best sellers. Everything here is all oriented towards being a store. So if you think that there's a chance that you're going to need this type of layout as part of your site, even if you don't have a front page store like this site, even if you're going to need a shop, for example, instead, then you definitely want to consider choosing a theme that's compatible from the outset instead of trying to reverse engineer your theme later on. All right, next up, are you going to need to do or want to do any type of community building on your website? There are a couple of well-known themes for WordPress that are designed to help you with community building. So you have BB Press, which gives you the ability to create your own forums. These forums can also be really useful if you need to do product support on your website as well. You can allow customers to come along and post questions on your forums. And then not only can you help them out, but sometimes your other customers can help each other out as well. Then you also have Buddy Press, which is kind of like something that lets you set up your own social media platform. Not exactly a social media platform, but it's something that allows people to create profiles for themselves and interact with other members and all of that type of thing. So if you want to do either of these two things, then you definitely want to choose a plugin that's compatible with these. So here's an example. This is an example of a theme that's compatible with BuddyPress. And this is a demo of how an individual user's profile page might look. So you've got the, uh, the person's profile image. You've got a whole bunch of information about that person and their sort of Twitter style posts on here as well. And this is something, again, you really want a compatible theme for if you want to do something like this. And this same theme is also BB Press compatible, which is allowing them to create a forum like this. So not only would you want compatibility, you would also want to have a look and see what the design style is for BB Press or Buddy Press in that theme so that you like the way the forums look or you like the way that the community area looks. So here's another example of how a forum can be styled to look in a theme. So we've got this one here. And then this is the same forum engine, but it's just styled differently. So it looks fairly different to the one that we just saw here. So you want to make sure A, that it's compatible and B, that you like the design style. All right, and then our third category of plugin that you should broadly consider in advance is if you're going to be needing to do anything around event management. So maybe your site is going to be for a business that offers classes or it has shows that you need to sell tickets for, or you have some type of schedule that you want to show people. So then you can look for a theme that's compatible with a plugin like Event Calendar, for example. So let's take a look at what kind of thing you might use this for. Now, this theme is designed for a yoga studio. So this would work equally well for just a, a generic gym. And if we scroll down here, you can see that we've got this really nice table of all of the classes that are available on an ongoing basis. So if you have this type of a project where you need to show people your ongoing schedule, then this could be really, really useful for you. Now, it might not just be a weekly schedule that you want to show people. Perhaps you have specific events that come and go and you want to be able to give people access to tickets. So this would be an example of what you might do in that scenario. So in this example, this theme is designed for a band and we have a list of the shows that this band is going to be performing. And then over here on the right, you have access to the tickets and the information for that event. 
So using a plugin for this type of thing is going to be a lot easier than trying to just manually format all this information. And then the fourth category of plugin that we're going to take a quick look at is just the possibility that you might want to have some special forms on your site. So contact forms or inquiry forms, anything that's going to have a few fields that you want people to be able to fill out and you want some control over what those fields are going to be. Again, there's a couple of well-known plugins that can help you with forms in WordPress. One is Gravity Forms. It has a very good reputation as being one of the best plugins that you can use to create your own forms, however you need them to be. And another popular one is Contact Form 7, and that's just oriented towards contact forms, and it's very good in that single area that it focuses on. So let's have a look at an example of the kind of theme that you might like to get if forms are going to be important to you. So this theme is giving us a demonstration of some of the ways that it's styling contact form seven forms. So it's up to each individual theme to decide how forms are going to be presented on a website. And if you know you're going to need forms, but the demonstration of the theme doesn't show you how forms will appear, then that's kind of a missing piece in your image of how the theme is actually going to look on your site. So here we can see that we've got this nice styling, nice clean styling for contact form seven forms with a couple of different options for how it can appear. So we have this option here as well with this little, and this one with this little jiggly stuff. So this shows you when you have a theme developer that puts some time and effort into compatibility. So uh, just to backtrack for a second, contact form seven can work on any website. You don't need a specifically compatible site, but if, you have a theme developer that's aware of Contact Form 7 and they've gone to the extra trouble to create styles specifically for it, then you get extra options for how you're going to have your website looking. That gives you a broad overview of those four categories of plugins that you should consider before you choose your theme. There are other plugin types as well, but those are the main ones that I think it's a good idea to prepare for in advance. So we've got e-commerce, community building, event management, and forms. Next up, we're gonna take a look at performance. How do you make sure that the theme you're considering buying is going to have good loading speed and overall performance? And not only how do you check, but also how do you know what kind of load speeds you should actually be aiming for? How slow is too slow? And how fast is fast enough? We're gonna go over those questions and we're gonna go through some answers in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress themes, things to think about before you buy. In this video, we're gonna go through some of the considerations that you should make in regards to performance. And by performance, I'm primarily talking about load speed. So the time it takes from landing on a site to being able to interact with the content. It doesn't necessarily matter if a site hasn't completely loaded in a reasonable time. What matters is that a person who's landed at your website can actually start to use it without having to wait too long. So what are the reasons that having a relatively quickly loading site are important? Now there's three main reasons that you wanna consider load speed in a theme. The first is search engine indexing. In the past, load speed was really only about user experience but now it can actually affect your search engine rankings. If you have a site that loads really slowly, then you may find that even if the content is fantastic, it doesn't get the search engine results that it should otherwise get because it might be being penalized for being too slow. What you see on the page here is a post on Google's Webmaster Central blog talking about potential penalization of slow loading sites. I'll include a link so you can have a read of this article for yourself, but it does confirm that you can be penalized if your site is too slow. However, at the same time, it does say that it's pretty much just the really, really slow sites that are gonna get penalized in the search rankings. Like you have to be providing a really bad experience to users before you are going to get knocked down. So you don't have to worry if your site is just, you know, a second slower than your perfect speed or two seconds slower, that's gonna be okay. It just needs to not be agonizingly slow, particularly for mobile users. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can evaluate what kind of loading experience you are providing to mobile users in a little bit. Now the second and third reason that load speed is important is that they can affect your bounce rate and your conversion rate. So your bounce rate is a measure of how many people arrive at your site and just leave before they've engaged with anything on your site at all. Your conversion rate is 
if you are selling a product or if there's something that your site exists to try to encourage people to do. Say, for example, you want to get people to join a newsletter that's going to keep them informed about something that you're working on, like a product or a service, then your conversion rate is how many of the people arrive at your site, do the thing that your site is asking them to do, buy a product, fill in a form, whatever that might be. So there have been some studies done on how page load speed affects your bounce rate and your conversion rate. And basically, the faster your site loads, the better your results are going to be in terms of engagement and conversion. So you can see in this chart on the page here, if your site loads in just a couple of seconds, then that's going to give you the best possible conversion rates and the best possible bounce rates. But as your site starts to slow, every second lost is some engagement with the visitor lost. And if the person is not engaged in the site, then they're not going to see any reason to consider purchasing your product or signing up to your newsletter or whatever else it might be. So you can see here that once we hit around the six second mark, then the results are roughly the same. So the real area that you want to try to operate in is get as close to this two second mark with your load speed as you possibly can and really try to avoid getting up to this area where your conversion rates and your bounce rates are really starting to suffer. So there are a couple of ways that you can evaluate how performant a theme is that you're considering buying. And again, we're going to be looking at demos and basing our evaluation on the performance of those demos. Because sometimes if you optimize your site, then you can actually get better performance out of a theme than you see on the demo. But of course, you can't know that until you buy the theme. So all you can really do is go off the performance of the demo. And we're going to check out three themes that perform pretty well. And like with all the other things that we've talked about, it's very rare to find a theme that's perfect in every way. So what we're going to do is just take a look at some that are at the, the top end of the spectrum that you can expect to see in the range of themes that are available for you to purchase. So if you find that a theme that you're considering purchasing has the same sort of results as these themes, then you're good to go. And because these are at the top end of the spectrum, you're probably going to be okay with some themes that perform even a little worse than these three. So let's go ahead and take a look. First up, we're going to check out this typology theme. This is the same theme we've been looking at for a couple of our demos so far. And the way we're going to test its performance is, once again, by using Chrome's inbuilt developer tools. And you'll notice in the uh, blog post that I mentioned earlier, they suggest that you should use a tool called Lighthouse. And Lighthouse is actually built into these developer tools. So if you see that reference, you'll know what it means. So we're going to open up Chrome Developer Tools again. And just a reminder, that's Control Shift I to open them up. And there's our little lighthouse symbol showing us that we're working with the lighthouse system. And what we're going to do is use one of these inbuilt audits. So we're going to say perform an audit. And you can check one of these items here. You can do multiple audits at once. But what we want to look at to begin with is a performance audit. So check performance and then just hit run audit. It's going to go through and test a bunch of stuff and do an automatic evaluation for you. So just give it a little time and let it run through all the steps that it needs to run through. All right, so that has finished scanning the site and evaluating its performance. And you can see here we've got a pretty good score. We're in the green. Pretty much whenever you see green, you can take that as being fine. That's a great score. And we've got 85 out of 100. Now, one of the things to bear in mind when you're running these audits is there's a whole bunch of variables that can affect the score that the theme comes up with that are not necessarily to do with the theme itself. If somebody else is running a download on your connection, if your ISP is congested, if your operating system is running an update, all these things can affect the score that you're going to get. So the best thing to do if you're considering buying a theme is run this audit a couple of times and ideally at different times of day. So you get a few different scores and then you can see where its average tends to fall. So for example, I have run this audit on this theme a few times and the score has typically fallen between the mid 80s you see here and up around 93, 94. In fact, it's most often gotten a score up in the mid 90s. So to demonstrate that, let's just run another audit and see what score it gets the second time. So there we go. This time we've got an 87 out of 100 score. Now, of course, Murphy's Law 
Each of the other times that I have run this order on this theme, it has got that mid-90s score far more often than an 80s score. So just bear that in mind. If a theme does give you a score lower than you're expecting, let's say it gives you something in the 70s or 60s and you think, oh, that's it, I can't use that theme, give it another chance, come back later, run a couple more tests and just make sure that it wasn't a period of time when your overall connection was suffering for one reason or another. All right, now let's look at a couple of other examples. Now this theme is another one that when I've tested it previously has scored in the mid 90s. So let's give it a run and see how it goes. But today it's coming up with a score of 77. So that's a good demonstration of why sometimes it doesn't pay to be overly critical of a theme's load speed because there is all kinds of variations that can affect the load speed on a given day. So take green as being passing. So this one will be interesting because previously this one scored 76 out of 100 for me, which we would consider to be a passing grade. It's in the green. And let's see what we get today. Today, it's actually gotten about the same score that it did in my previous tests, 75 out of 100. So once again, that's in the green, so we'll count that as a passing score. Now, there's another way that you can try to evaluate the performance of a theme, and that is using Google's PageSpeed Insights tool. So we'll just run those same sites through this tool. Just grab the URL and paste it in here. And of course, I'll give you a link to this PageSpeed Insights tool in the notes below this video. Now here we can see that there are two different scores. So it's evaluating how well it's performing on desktop and it's giving us a score in the green. It's saying that's very good. In the mobile, it's giving us an okay score. And take this as just one thing in the overall picture of the performance of this theme. We're gonna have another way to evaluate performance on mobile, which we'll go through in a couple of seconds. Don't necessarily decide that the theme is not gonna work for you if you see something in the orange here. Get a bunch of measures and then put them together, sort of average them mentally, and use that to help you decide if something is performance enough. Because on the one hand, you have this orange score here, but you have a green score coming through here, and you have quite a good performance coming through on this score here. So let's try this theme as well. And this tool is particularly helpful because it does give you that division between desktop performance and mobile performance. And it's often the mobile performance that you really need to work well. So this theme has done quite well on both mobile and desktop. So we've got really good scores on both counts. And then we'll have a quick look at our third theme. Now the other thing to bear in mind with this testing tool is this doesn't actually test the real world performance of a site. What it does is it has a list of best practices and it lets you know how many of those best practices this theme uses. In application, that may or may not affect the load speed of the theme. This just gives you a sort of a score on how the theme is coded up. So once again, we've got a medium score for mobile with this theme and on desktop, a good score. So definitely though, try to get at least one of these scores in the green. And then in practical application, you're definitely gonna have a much better chance of having a quick loading site. All right, now the next thing that you wanna do to evaluate the load speed of a theme is to actually just watch the load speed happening live. Again, using Google's web developer tools, we can go into the network tab here and we're gonna get a little time displayed here telling us how long it takes this theme to load. So what you wanna do is go up here and hold down this refresh button and then choose empty cache and hard reload and that will simulate the experience that a person is gonna have when they're coming to your site for the first time without having any of your content cached. So let's watch that and see how fast this loads. All right, so there we go. The main content is loaded in 1.5 seconds and everything is completely finished in 2.8 seconds. So that is a really good score. You remember we'd wanna sort of hover around that two second point if we can. We'll do the same thing on our next theme. Again, really good scores, under a second with getting the actual content in and a little under three seconds with rendering it completely. And we'll look at our last theme here. 
network tab, hold down and empty cache, hard reload. Now this one's a little slower and that's one of those things that you're gonna have to start weighing up. You've also got a lot more stuff happening on this front page. The other themes are a bit more minimalist and this one has a bit more focus on presentation. So it's gonna be up to you to determine which of those two things is gonna be more important for your site project. This is still not too bad. Three seconds for the initial load, five and a bit seconds to complete the loading process. Now those times though are desktop loading times on a full speed connection. What you also wanna do is try to simulate the process that a person's gonna have on a mobile device that might be on a 3G connection, for example. Now the way that you can evaluate that is by hitting this little drop down here and then choosing fast 3G. You can choose slow 3G if you want, but I think it's probably reasonable to assume that if somebody knows that they have a bad mobile connection, they're gonna have a little bit more patience to wait for sites to load. This is probably gonna be more representative of the average mobile user. So switch to fast 3G and then it's the same process again, hold down and empty cache and hard reload. Now that's still a really good score. That's a considerably slower connection that's been allowed for and that's still come in in just a few seconds. Let's try the next one, fast 3G. This one has a really good initial score and a little bit longer on the completion, but that is still just fine because you might've noticed that you started having some content appear on the page before the loading had completed. And that's what really counts, giving people something that they can interact with even if the rest of the site is still loading. And then finally, we will check our third theme. So our initial content is in, that took about four seconds. The rest of it is still loading, but you know, that's still not too bad because we could start reading this content even while the rest of this loading completed itself. Now I would suggest that it's these load speeds that are what really counts when you're evaluating the performance of a theme. The other measures that we looked at can definitely help give you an overall picture, but the proof is in the pudding. If a site has a really bad score on the audit and on page speed insights, but it loads fast, then that's all you really need. And conversely, if something has managed to somehow get a great evaluation score, but it still just loads really slowly, then that's not gonna help you out. Although that's unlikely. If a site does get good evaluation scores, the chances are you are gonna have good load speeds as well. All right, so to recap, try to keep your theme loading times somewhere in between the two and five second mark and the faster the better. The faster your site, the more engagement that you're gonna get from people and the more likely you are to have decent conversion rates if that's part of your project's goals. In the next lesson, we're gonna look at the last area of consideration for the course, and that is accessibility. We're gonna go over how to make sure that your site is accessible for everybody who wants to visit, including people who may be needing to work around disabilities. So we're gonna go through how you can check that your theme is up to standard on the accessibility front in the next lesson. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome back to WordPress Themes, things to think about before you buy. This is the last lesson in the course, and we're gonna be taking a quick look at accessibility. Accessibility is the term that we use to refer to making sure that a website is accessible for everybody. There are a few measures that you can take to make sure that sites can be interacted with by screen readers, that they're as easy as possible to read for people who may have visual impairments. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And luckily from your end of the equation, you don't actually have to know a lot of detail about all the little different things that need to be done on the developer's end. All you need to do is grab an accessibility audit tool like this one here, and then just run an automated test on a theme you're considering purchasing and just seeing how the score comes out. Now, I would say that running a theme through this type of test is a good idea for any website, no matter what, just because it's a good thing to do to try to make life as easy as possible for people who are already dealing with some difficulties. It's really difficult to browse the internet if you're depending on screen readers and assistive technologies. So it's just a good thing to do to try to smooth that out as much as possible. It doesn't cost you anything to make sure that a site is accessible and it can really help to make somebody's life easier. 
On top of that as well, if you happen to know that your audience is more likely to be dealing with these types of problems, then you should be even more focused on making sure you have a good accessibility score. So say, for example, the age group of your visitors tends towards being a little older, then you're more likely to have people whose eyesight is not what it was when they were younger, and you just want to make life as easy on them as you possibly can. So this is a plugin for Chrome. Again, I'll give you a link in the description below this video. You just install it into Chrome and then you run an accessibility audit in the exact same way that we were just running a performance audit on a theme. So let's check out some examples. Once again, we'll look at some examples of themes that are doing things the right way. Now, this theme in particular is excellent because it does everything absolutely 100% right to make sure that this theme is fully accessible. So Control Shift I to open up the Chrome developer tools. We've got our little audit panel here. We're gonna hit perform an audit. And then instead of ticking the performance box, we're gonna tick the accessibility box. And this will only appear if you have installed that plugin. And then we'll just run the audit. And there we go. It's got the maximum possible score for accessibility, 100 points out of 100. And then what you can do is expand this little thing here, and it's gonna show you all of the things that this theme is doing correctly. Now, some of this is gonna be a little bit technical, so you don't need to necessarily invest time in learning what all of these things mean, but some of them are a bit more self-explanatory. Things like color contrast is satisfactory. So for example, you don't wanna have a theme that puts gray text on a gray background with just slightly different shades, and then the text starts to blend into the background. You wanna make sure that there's enough contrast in the colors of foreground information against background decoration. So you can go through that and dig into it and learn more about those things if you want, but all you really need to do is just run this audit and make sure that the score is pretty good. Now 100 is ideal, but you know, if you can't get 100, then just go for the highest score you can. So here's another example. We'll run an audit on this cool lab theme. Now you're seeing some crosses there, but don't necessarily be alarmed because we've still got a score of 89. It's in the green, so that's not too bad. And you can have a look at the areas that it hasn't passed well, and you can assess how much of an issue you think that's going to cause for your site visitors. So in the best possible example, we have eight past audits. This one has passed seven, so it's still pretty good. But you've got a couple of little things like here, background and foreground colors don't have a sufficient contrast ratio. And that will make it a little bit harder for some people to read your site. Let's look at another couple of examples. So out of interest, I've pulled up the best selling theme on Theme Forest and the best rated theme on Theme Forest. And let's see how they perform on the accessibility audit. There we go, 97 out of 100. That's again, a really good score. The only thing that's been flagged here is that there should be a little bit more color contrast between the foreground and background. So that is probably coming from areas like here where you can see there's a light gray on a dark gray, pretty much exactly what I described earlier. But that's something that you can also work around by putting your main content somewhere else on the screen. But overall, 97 out of 100, 97%, that's a really good score. So I would count that as definitely a passing grade. Now let's try this theme, the composer theme. Run our accessibility audit. So there we go, we've got eight past audits again and a score of 94 out of 100, which is again, very good. Just have a couple of little items here. They would make things marginally more difficult for somebody using assistive technologies, but overall they've got a lot of things in here that are gonna make life easier for somebody who's using assistive technologies or dealing with visual impairment. So those are a few examples to show you around the level that you really wanna target. And you can refer back to this theme as an example of perfection in this particular category. And that's something that's pretty rare. It's pretty rare to find something that's perfect. So as I've said a few times throughout this course, don't necessarily expect that you're gonna be able to find a theme that's perfect in every way. Just try to evaluate which things are most important for your project and try to find a theme that has a passing grade in these categories, even if it doesn't necessarily have a perfect grade. All right, so that is the end of the final lesson in this course. 
In the next video, we're just going to summarize everything that we've gone through into a nutshell so that you have a video you can come to and get a quick reference on all of the things that you should consider before you buy a WordPress theme. So we're gonna wrap everything up in the next video. I'll see you there. Hey, welcome to the last video in WordPress themes, things to check before you buy. With this last video for the course, we're just gonna give you a reference that you can come back to any time. We're just gonna power through a list of everything that we covered, and then this can act as a reference or a reminder anytime you need to check on a new theme that you're thinking about buying. I'm gonna go through these pretty quick so that it's something convenient you can come back to again and again in the future. All right, so first up, you need to check for responsiveness and mobile friendliness. So start by doing just a manual resize of your browser window on a demo of the theme. Test it on all of the devices that you have. Use Chrome Web Developer Tools to emulate devices that you don't have. And when you're going through this process, just check to make sure that there isn't anything that's too big or too small at any particular screen size. So images that are too big or too small, text that's too big or too small, and so on. Make sure that if the theme has multiple columns that they collapse down at a smaller size and check to make sure that touch, especially on navigation, on menus, is properly supported. Then you need to check for cross-browser compatibility. So first figure out which browsers you need to support. Ideally do this with statistics that you have gathered from your own traffic. Install as many browsers as you can on as many operating systems as you can and try to check all the different combinations that you have access to. And for other combinations of browsers and operating systems, you can use third-party emulation tools. Next up, make sure that there's well-crafted typographies. That just means make sure that everything is easy to read. Check on the default text size, check on the headings, make sure that their sizes work for the different tiers one through six. Make sure that the spacing in between headings and text and in between multiple headings is good and that you like the style. Look for comfortable line heights so that lines in a paragraph aren't too cramped up together or too far apart. And then have a look for extras like block quotes and lists and make sure that they're styled in a way that you like. You have to check that the theme is ready in one way or another for the eventuality of there being no JavaScript active for a visitor. So install and use a no JavaScript toggle into your website. Turn off JavaScript on the theme demo and check that it doesn't completely break any sliders or menus. Make sure that any fonts are still looking good. And in the event that you have a theme that just can't work without JavaScript, make sure that it is showing a message to users so that at least they know why things aren't working properly. Then you just need to run through and make sure that you've got full compatibility with all the different WordPress templates or the main WordPress templates rather, and that you have formatting support. So. Check out the comments section, make sure that's all looking good. Look for left and right aligned images. Check and make sure the blog is styled the way you like. Have a look at the single posts, single pages, and the archive pages, so for things like tags and categories. Try to find a theme that uses structured data so you have the opportunity to have rich search results show up in Google. To find out if that's the case, use Google's testing tool for structured data and look in the results that it shows you to see if the data you want Google to pick up on is displaying. Think ahead on what plugins you might need to use because it might be necessary or at least preferable to get a theme that's designed with those plugins in mind. So think about if you're gonna need e-commerce and what kind of e-commerce. Think about if you're gonna to want to do some type of community building on your site. Think about the possible need for event management and have a think about the forms that you might wanna use on your site. For every theme, you wanna make sure that it has a certain level of performance. To check on that, you can run a performance audit in Chrome Web Developer Tools. You can test in Google PageSpeed Insights and you wanna ideally get scores that are in the green on both of those testing platforms and the higher the better with those scores. Use the Network tab in the Chrome Web Developer Tools and check on the normal desktop loading speed and then also check on the fast 3G load speed. With those tests, you're aiming for a load speed lower than five seconds ideally and the faster, the better for retention and for conversion rates. And then finally, run an accessibility test on the theme you're considering purchasing. Install the accessibility developer tools in Chrome and run the accessibility audit that it adds into your browser. And there, you wanna look for a score that's in the green. And again, the higher the score, the better. So that's our summary. Come back to this video whenever you need to just run through that checklist when you're looking at a new theme that you're considering picking up.
And with that, that wraps up our course, WordPress themes, things to think about before you buy. I hope you found this all really valuable and that it does something towards making sure that your next website project is really successful in all the ways that you want it to be. So thank you so much for taking this course and I'll see you in the next one.